Welcome to another edition of Tales of the Workshop. Today, we're gonna to look at how to set the brushes on an AC series motor, or otherwise known as the universal motor. The universal motor is also known as an AC series motor. What I've done is I've actually taken one of our DC machines from our lab and I put it right beside a universal motor. With the exception of the face plates where we can see that there's some distinct differences, but if I was to take the, the face plates and open the doors, you'd see that you'd be very hard pressed to be able to differentiate between the DC model and the AC model. So let's have a look. Now what I've done is I've actually put a DC machine and I've put it right beside the AC machine. Now looking at the cover plate, we can see that there's some distinct differences. The DC machine having a rheostat, but other than just the colors, they're almost the exact same. The universal motor is also known as a, an alternating current series motor. What we can see is that it has a series field, just like the, the DC machine. It has an armature, just like the DC machine. It has brushes. Down here, what differentiates the AC machine from the DC machine is that the DC machine has what we call a shunt field. The AC machine has a compensator winding, and it is the compensator winding that allows the universal motor to operate either in an AC power supply or with a DC power supply. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to open up the doors and let you see for yourself that they are almost identical. If it wasn't for the actual label, a person would actually be very hard pressed to be able to tell the difference between the two. So let's open up the doors and have a look for ourselves. What we should be able to notice is that both units have a commutator. They both have brush holders as well as what we can see here are carbon brushes. What's going to set the, each machine apart is the winding of its stator, or in the case of this machine, its field coils. Now, the major points of distinction between these two machines isn't in its armature, but it's rather in its stator. What we can see in the DC machine is it's apparent that it has four distinct poles, and they have the series and shunt field windings wrapped around each of the poles. But when we do a comparison to the AC machine, what we can see is that this stator has concentric coils and they are basically lap wound. It has four distinct phase groups or poles, but they're not wound the same at all. You can actually see how the stator is subdivided into many other smaller poles. And that's the major distinction between the AC machine and the DC machine. It's not in the armature, which we can see is they're fairly identical in every respect. It's in the winding of the stator. This segment was dedicated purely to learning how to set the brushes on the universal motor. Let's suppose that we go ahead and wire the motor, but we don't take the time to set the brushes. What could possibly happen? The easy answer, or the textbook answer, is that you're going to see excessive arcing and sparking at the commutator, but as well as across the brushes. And it'll diminish the lifespan of your brushes. But that's just the textbook. Beyond that, we have to look at the horsepower rating of the machine. Now, the manufacturer has stipulated that this machine is supposed to be able to deliver a quarter horsepower if the brushes were properly set. By not setting the brushes, I'm not gonna be able to develop 
the kind of power that the motor is capable of delivering or the rated speed that it's supposed to operate at. So that's one of the more important takeaways of why do we want to set the brushes. I want to make sure the motor can produce the horsepower it's supposed to at the speed it is supposed to be able to deliver it at. Now, what we have to do in this procedure is I need an alternating current power supply. I'm going to need two voltmeters. And this is really fascinating for me, at, at least, is that we're going to use the process of a transformer. We're going to run alternating current into the armature. And because of the fact that alternating current has a frequency, it is going to provide a cutting action and it's going to induce a voltage into the series winding. And based off of the voltage readings we're going to get, I'll be able to adjust my brushes using this yoke right here and I'll be able to optimize the placement of the brushes so that we can get the proper horsepower and current flow in the machine. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go ahead and pre-wire everything and then we're going to be right back. And we're back. Now for the sake of my viewers, I didn't do the final connection for the second voltmeter. In this procedure, we're running 120 volts from my power supply into the armature, back out of the armature, and then I'm also taking a voltage reading. Now, I've got this voltmeter set for 50 uh, on the 100 volt scale, and I'm going to do the same here. Now, there is no electrical connection between the series field and the armature. It is purely off of magnetic induction. So it's going to act like a transformer. And so I'm hooking it up to the series field. Now for the sake of my viewers and for the sake of clarity in demonstrating this, I'm going to opt to open the door so people can actually see how I'm going to make the adjustments. So we're just going to open the door. Now, obviously, this is going to be electrified. I am not going to stick my hands anywhere near there. Now, in this procedure, we're going to turn on our power supply. And we're going to bring up our variable output so that we're reading 50 volts on the 100 volt scale. So gently, we're going to bring up the voltage. So we're going on the 100 volt scale, so it's the scale on the bottom and we're going up to 50 volts. Now, what we can see is that this is my input. This is the series field. And I'm only reading about, about 25 volts, roughly half. Now that means that my brushes are not properly set. Ideally, much like the procedure we would use on a DC motor, I want to set my brushes so that I see the lowest value of voltage. Now that may seem contrary, but I want to maximize current flow. So by adjusting it, now we can go left or right, but as I'm going right, we can see that the voltage is going down and I'm looking for the, the lowest possible value according to this procedure. See so right about there, I'm almost, almost at zero, but now, if I continue to push this lever or the yoke that adjusts my brushes, if I continue to go past this point, what we should see is that the voltage is starting to increase again. And just like we've seen. So I've gone or I've overshot. So I want to come back until we optimize it right there. So can everybody see that? So that's what we want to see. And accordingly, my brushes are now set. I can turn off the power and put my motor into operation. And that's all I have for you today, folks. Thanks again for tuning in. And please consider hitting like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos. Until next time, stay safe out there.